right, thanks a lot for the invitation. And uh, as you may have seen on the program, um, my introductory uh, comments will be rather short. And my idea was to keep this a little bit in a workshop fashion. And maybe some of you have been already watching the webinar we have commissioned last Friday, which is available on the internet. It's in German, of course. Um, but, um, oh, by the way, what is the audience-like structure? So how many of you are from Berlin? How many are international investors uh, or potential funding recipients? Just to give me a, an, an idea. So who's from Berlin? Okay, well, that's pretty much international. So, so who's from abroad, uh, i.e. Maybe, maybe not even outside Berlin, but maybe outside Germany or... So... Pardon? All right, excellent. I mean, kind of like the classification. Um, I'm half German, but I've come here last year for this company. So does that count from abroad? Uh, well, uh, that's for you to decide. So, but, so excellent. So at least we have two guys um, who may not be that familiar with the German circumstances and conditions. OK. Um, in the initial conversation I just had a minute ago, I was asked whether I can announce any news or so. I guess at this point, rather not. So for any of you, we have been uh, conversations before. I guess some of it will be already uh, known and uh, old stuff. But I think, um, or as you see in the program, uh, my initial monologue is just the starting point. And the main part, I guess, is uh, that I'm available for your questions and any hints you need for potential applications for the uh, current stage of the program and beyond. All right, um, just a few words on the background or the starting point why the uh, German Federal Parliament, Parliament <coughs> has availed 50 million games funding with the current year's budget. And as some of you may know, the starting point as such in, in political terms has been the uh, respective provision in the current coalition government and the coalition treaty of February 2018. Um, I think there are essentially two um, background considerations that, as all of you know, so um, uh, again, if, if I'm not uh, presenting any new stuff to you, just um, skip over it a little bit. I, but I guess it's important to reiterate the, the rationale for such a funding program. Um, essentially, we and the industry, we, view, we see uh, computer games as an important digital creative industry, and both in economic terms, and as you uh, know, or as you probably witness and, and read the international growth rate, it's, it's, it, uh, I, I think everybody expects that the market importance and significance will continue to rise in, in the next uh, few years. So it's important both as an economic sector, but it's also important in, in terms of uh, the innovations, potentials, both for society and the economy. And again, uh, most of you should be aware of the implications in, let's say, virtual reality, but also other things uh, that are, that can be seen as very beneficial for other sectors beyond the immediate game uh, industry uh, realm. As I said, uh, we do see um, global and national uh, significant growth rates in terms of the market volume. And again, uh, the, the problem, and this is one of the starting points for the intervention, um, we did notice in recent years that the portion of uh, German producers in, uh, compared to what's being sold in Germany has been second or in relative terms some, uh, uh, at some parts even decreasing. So considering the importance of the market and the growth potentials, um, we felt or the industry or let's say the wider community, if we want to call it this way, that uh, there should be an initiative to support this uh, significant seg market segment in Germany. And that pretty much culminates in the objective of the program that we want to strengthen the game industry as such in Germany and with regard to international competitiveness. But at the same time, we want to leverage those innovation potentials for other sectors 
not only in economic terms, but also if you talk about the health sector or if you talk about uh, education and so on. Okay, um, as some of you or most of you know from, let's say, the uh, previous um, presentations, information on our website, we started out in April this year with um, announcement of two funding components. First component or first phase is a, let's, if you want to call it pilot phase, a small funding component with a uh, with funding um, with grant sizes up to 200,000 euros per project. That we started or announced late April, and um, since uh, June 3rd, you can submit project proposals for that funding track. And at the same time, and in brackets, which, which is the main uh, funding component of the overall program, we want to give uh, full-size financial support or uh, larger financial support um, for projects with the volume 5, 10, or even 50 million, depending on the budget size, uh, of course. Um, that funding track, that second funding track, um, as also many of you know, has to be uh, has to run through a EU not notification process because it's essentially a subsidy and any subsidy in Europe uh, that is likely to distort the single market has to uh, run through the EU notification and that's the current stage we are in with the second funding track. We also had this uh, interest um, call for proposals uh, published in late April to get an idea what the really the market potentials are in, in terms of larger projects and also in terms of uh, the uh, project duration that is uh, requested and required by the industry. Uh, the response I think is fairly or is very good and that is certainly an important element for the uh, debate to come on the federal budget in the year 2020. Okay, let's focus a little bit on the pilot funding. Uh, just give you the, the key elements in terms of the financial elements, as I said. Um, and by the way, all the detailed stuff I'm uh, uh, presenting here, you can all find on the internet, on our website. And since Friday, we also have this webinar. Uh, for the only English-speaking people, um, I guess we'll work on, on our English language materials, but I think in terms of the key elements, uh, maybe you can run the documents through some translation um, programs or ask any of your partners or so. Um, because um, in essence, if we do talk about mock development, um, we are clearly geared towards growing or towards uh, uh, producers that have a growth potential. So. I think if you do have a team, uh, considering so the, the German um, application and uh, grant approval process, there should be at least one team member um, being able to draft uh, German documents. That's just because there are multiple actors involved and uh, I think to have the full process in English maybe comes at a later stage, but uh, right now in the pilot phase, I think we have to uh, stick to German documents for pragmatic reasons. But just to give you an idea on the key elements, um, as I said, under the de minimis uh, regime, the grants can reach, per project can reach up to 200,000 euros, and the basic funding rate uh, is up to 50%. At the same time, startup companies or small companies, they can receive uh, a bonus of up to 20% and medium-sized companies um, up to 10%. That's again in the uh, European uh, legal context uh, standard uh, procedure. So in terms of the funding volumes or, or co-funding shares, uh, it's pretty much uh, standard processes and standard um, standard rates also uh, applicable in other uh, similar programs. As I said, we, the, uh, the starting point for the um, uh, electronic system, I'll have a slide later on, uh, 
it went public on the 3rd of June and for the first round um, submissions can be made until the end of August um, so I think there should be sufficient time to put something together and as I indicated in other settings um, it's the most important uh, thing is to put in a proposal so we will not turn down anybody on the basis of an let's say proposal with technical deficits uh, you will certainly not be put let's say on the first shelf if you have a dodgy proposal but we'll always get back to you and tell you have to refine your proposal or put in additional elements uh, the most important thing is that you uh, stick to the thematic content and to the substance so you do have to work on computer games production and not on other things that's definitely um, a killer factor if you do other things than computer games production or, uh, and with the technical quality um, we are always um, able and willing to help and I think in the previous weeks we already had a number of um, uh, comments and questions um, on the internet we also as I said we had the webinar last Friday so I think we are not I think we are doing our best to support you in the process and uh, try to help and maneuver you through the uh, funding processes and formal requirements Okay, um, that's just a screenshot of the so-called easy online systems. Uh, in, in the webinar last Friday, somebody suggested, uh, yes, the usability could be a little bit enhanced. Um, that's certainly the case, but um, the, the wider infrastructure um, of these systems, it's not just only for our program, uh, this so-called easy online system, it's also used by the Ministry of uh, Research. So it's an established system, and but um, uh, I would say I will also fully support to bring it to the next level, to bring it, uh, I'm not saying up to date, but um, there is there are certainly some, some potentials in terms of, um, let's say, bringing it to the next step in terms of user feeling. Uh, but I think overall, um, it's, I think it's possible to work uh, with it. And in our neighbor program, the so-called M Fund, we do also have a number of startups. So I, I think it's possible to get an application through, even so uh, some, of it, some of the graphics may not be that fancy uh, as you may experience even in your own uh, production system. So, um, and in the webinar that we placed online, and I think it's also on YouTube, uh, there is a step-to-step -step, uh, guidance and explanation what to put in, in in that system and also on the different forms and so on. Uh, this is just an explanation or a, a graphic <coughs> depiction, uh, depiction of the this uh, so-called easy online uh, system. Okay, so that's pretty much my initial, uh, these are my initial points and uh, on my final slide, I put together sort of the, the key elements, all the information, of course, as I said, it's right now, it's only in German, you can find on our website, and the webinar as well as all the forms and so on. And if you do have additional questions, you can always uh, direct them at our uh, email address, uh, also in English. So we did have a few uh, inquiries in English uh, that we can always manage, but in terms of if it's really, um, if you uh, reach the stage of a formal proposal, then as I said, you have to find a German team member that is assisting you or drafting you some of the documents. I think in terms of the uh, funding available and the funding volume, I think it, sh it should be even also for international funding recipients, it should be uh, doable and manageable to have some German guys, German speaking guys in the team. All right, thanks for your attention and I think we do have significant time for questions and answers. Of UVR in Wonderland and we develop 
virtual reality software and content and games. And is there a plan to, or that there is a kind of like a strand of uh, support for R&D, also games, technology for R&D? Because we are planning to develop uh, software for procedural content in vehicles to kind of like develop games automatically in moving. Um, under this uh, funding track or under this under the games funding program, at this point, not. Uh, we'll see what the future brings. But if you, uh, as I indicated, we do have in the Federal Ministry of Transport and Digital Infrastructure, we do have other innovation and research programs. And um, in terms of these innovations that profit the transport sector there you can maybe inquire about other programs so for instance if you do work on automated and connected vehicles you may check out uh, those programs they are in the same department as uh, us <coughs> our colleagues working on the, uh, those issues uh, then on the, the so-called m fund that is focusing on database innovations We'll also have for the next um, poll for proposals in late summer, I guess we'll also have a sort of specific theme on connecting those two spheres and saying, okay, how, how we can utilize, uh, let's say, innovations and ideas or processes uh, from the game sphere for that neighboring program. So, but, so in a way, uh, the answer is yes, if it's currently related to transport and innovations in transport or data for mobility 4.0. And is it upcoming or is it in, in, in the make, uh, this program, or is it already running? The program is running. I mean, the M Fund runs now for three years, uh, but we do have these annual proposals, and uh, the next, it's usually being published in midsummer or so, and um, you can check it out on the internet. We, we do have now the fifths in, in the making. Um, what we did, we usually selected specific themes that we felt are very up-to-date and relevant for the ministry. For instance, in last year we had artificial intelligence, we had blockchain, other things, or uh, uh, train technologies. So all kinds of uh, uh, topics and themes that we felt are relevant for our um, data-based innovations program. So, uh, in the same, uh, on the same token, we'll most likely have, uh, let's say, one project slot on games innovations for data for mobility 4.0 or so. Yeah, that's good. very well. Thanks. Uh -huh. um, I have some questions. So, uh, when can we expect the results of the application? In the fourth quarter of this year? Uh, no, I mean, if you submit it now, yeah. Uh, if you or if you did or already submit, then first of all, thanks very much. And no, I mean we, we will get back to you within the next few weeks or so. So of course, okay, um, um, as I said, we are working on different tracks right now. We still have to uh, push through the other uh, funding guideline. Uh, but uh, no, for the first, uh, we always indicated that the first ones who submitted will also get the first results. So. If you are, uh, if you were the first one to submit, then we'll look at your proposal, the first one, and if it does meet the requirements, then we'll say, okay, fine, put in your additional stuff in your application, and if it does have some technical problems, then we'll also come back to you and tell you, okay, here are some things uh, you should modify or expand or elaborate or so. Okay, so. Um like apl applying early is a factor, is an important factor. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, I have a couple more real quick ones. <laughs> um, I have the same question about the rough uh, timeline and the submission. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I mean, the I'm, I'm, I'm worried, so if you have 10, then you have to consult your colleagues whether. <laughs> yeah, and, and the 20% the extra for the small companies yeah. from the rate. What determines a small company? Is that in the guideline as well? Uh, yeah, there is, an, uh, as I said, there are. Uh, established uh, definition okay. of what's a small company and what's a medium-sized company. Um, if it's not on our website, that I, sh I think it should be in the FAQs, but I couldn't tell you the specific numbers um, uh, out, of, uh, out of the blue. So, okay. um, 
I think it's it's been a hmm? up to 50 yeah and then I I think up to medium is a 500 or so um, okay. and then there are certain that, yeah, stipulations regarding the, the nature of the mm -hmm. legal legal nature of the company so and uh, are there any uh, tax breaks or any tax incentives in this program or is this just a no grant? it's a grant program it's just a grant program okay. right. thank you Germany doesn't do tax breaks <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean I never heard of it well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a secret, and again, it's not something we decide, it's, it's a decision by the German federal government. I'll just give you, so that I can give you from an analytical perspective, the background. Uh, that I think the, the tax uh, guys or the tax politicians, they are usually skeptical towards tax-based um, uh, uh, support mechanisms because uh, they're very, you cannot easily calculate how much tax you're losing because you only know two or three years later on because it, it's running through the overall tax system and as you know there are federal, <coughs> state and local governments involved. So that's as a sort of objective explanation why the, the guys who are deciding on these different um, allocations on these programs are a little bit restrictive in terms of tax-based mechanisms. You can combine the medium board funding and the minimum funding, right? I think I've heard it. Yeah. And the what, huh? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. And, and I, have some, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I have some questions about how, uh, what it means if you have both of them. Like, mm -hmm. uh, if I want to have the funding for the prototype from the medium board and also a prototype funding from the millions. And uh, is the like, 200,000 um, yeah, um, maximum. maximum, is it then for both of them or is it only for the millions? No, only for the diminutives. Uh, the diminutives you can understand as an exception. You don't have to request explicit permission by the European Commission. Uh, for the other funding programs, for instance, uh, the State of Bavaria or uh, North Rhine Westphalia, they also do have a similar games funding program. In fact, some of our elements we've been drawing on their uh, previous earlier work, and they have been running through the EU notification process. So, if you do apply for such an, uh, another program with something else, then it's okay. And uh, under the de minimis, uh, yeah. it's related to your company and the restriction on the de minimis is you cannot receive more than 200,000 euros <coughs> in grant support within the last three years or so. Um, I have one more question. Um, if, if like for example, you um, in the medium board, but, um, you have to um, say what to uh, what you spend the money on and if like for example um, I decided that someone is getting 2,000 each month can I then use the de minimis money to give them a little bit more or to maybe <laughs> uh, I, well I mean we will have to look into that scenario uh, but generally um, I mean, we are funding uh, an overall project. So um, if you submit a project proposal to us, you have an overall budget. And then, you have, of course, let's say you have one employee that you're already getting some other structured support from uh, Berlin. Uh, or the from Berlin. Um, you just indicate that support. Essentially, the ceiling is not determined by us. So let's say you receive 50% from us. You can certainly get some other funding, the restriction and the ceiling are the standard EU provisions and um, legal uh, elements. So uh, essentially, it's uh, up to you not to commit any uh, uh, legal fraud or so. But um, the safest is always uh, just if you do get some other funding streams, just to indicate and uh, if we're not sure, we will just ask you, or we just will ask the guys in Berlin if, if you do allow. So, um, 
again, uh, we are not uh, in a way against it. Uh, we just want to make sure <coughs> that uh, we adhere to the legal processes. Okay. When do you expect to get the notification from you? Um, in fall. Yeah. In so, fall. yeah. So, why, do, why, do it, why isn't it then immediately in, um, in force? If it's not, I mean, <coughs> you obviously will hand out the money for, but then it's submitted to the de minimis, although you are then exempted by them. It's not. De minimis, you don't have to be notified. Yeah, yeah. No, of course. If you're notified, then you're exempt of the de minimis. Yeah, but that's for the next fund. Yeah. The next fund. Yeah, is yeah. Not it's it's uh, it's clearly uh, it's a timing issue. Mm -hmm. uh, the de minimis we were able to do now. Yeah. And the other one, we, uh, I mean, maybe. So it's a couple of weeks that are. No, months. Yeah. Uh, months. Oh. And. So we're um, for the parliament to be the parliament. No, I mean, the t as far as 2019 is concerned, <laughs> the parliament has been given us the money last year. Um, but certainly, the question is what happens 2020? Um, okay. But no, no, it was a timing issue. We have the funds available, but. We wanted to kickstart the program, and with the de minimis under that ceiling, we can. Of course, we could have waited for another six months or so. Um, so I mean, and again, this is this was not our uh, glorious idea. Others, other federal states, have proceeded in a similar way. It's, it's a, in a way a compromise to say we start something with some something small now, and have the full blown version after. Do the other states still have to notify now that Germany is notified? Do you know? No, they were uh, they yeah, were faster. The others, but the rest, the other countries, the other lands, um, like Berlin, is not notified yet. Would they still need to notify or are they automatically notified in the German? Uh, I would assume if they would have the exact funding guideline we have, maybe not, or maybe that would speed up the process. Um, uh, but if you take the, the federal states funding, uh, Bavaria was first and then uh, NRV, and both of them had to notify. And I mean, we did have a look at uh, both the, the funding guidelines, but I didn't compare them word by word. So um, I'm not that an expert in EU notification under which conditions you can take a previous funding guide as a precedent and say, okay, now we just change the name of the state or so. I think you have to go through the process nevertheless, but in our case, um, even so, if, you, if you're very close to previous examples that may uh, speed up the process, but uh, we could have not uh, done simply saying, all right, the Bavarians and uh, NRV already went through, so now we just copy theirs and we're fine with the notification. That's uh, not possible. I have another question concerning to your personal uh, um, staff costs. So is it possible to build Rückstellung? I don't know the English word, sorry. And if it's possible, um, is there a gap? Uh, I, I guess I would have to skip an answer on that. Uh, that's very specific and um, I, I admit that's not usually my ball game. So. Um, Again, my, my recommendation would be just if you have an idea, uh, we started with the idea, if you have an idea and uh, if you do have these funding, let's say restrictions or conditions attached, just put them in the proposal and then we'll sort it out. Or if, if you don't want to wait for the proposal, just send us an email and uh, indicate those um, questions. I do remember my colleagues have received a number of those questions, how to deal with co-funding, how to deal with other programs and so on. Um, so uh, I'm afraid, I guess I'm not the right person to answer that specific question. Uh, yeah, um, so the, if the EU gives clearance in autumn to, uh, I guess, let go of the minimis for this program, would it apply retroactively to the programs now. So if you if you apply now, you're obviously under de minimis restrictions, two hundred thousand, but then the EU approves it. Do you can apply again this year? Probably not, I guess. It's then for the next year. How does this work? 
in the different programs if the clearance actually comes from the university. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, let's hmm. say you need 500,000 you apply now for 200,000 and then next year for the... No, I mean, you can year? still, uh, yeah. as soon as the, um, <laughs> the notified uh, funding guideline is out, you're always free to apply. So if you have received some 200,000 now, that's, that doesn't in any way predetermine whether you'll get some funding later on. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's the other way around. Uh, as I said, it's a, it's a time issue. But um, we, are, we and yourself, you're not constrained whether you've got some funding now. So, <coughs> the, so the only uncertain aspect is how, how much money we get from the parliament and uh, when we get some feedback uh, from the EU. But once we get the feedback and publish the, the second phase or the larger phase, then you're free to apply whatever you want. For the same and project, by the way? Yeah, that's what I mean. yeah. That was, uh, yeah. Well, not for the same tasks um no no yeah but if, if i apply now for a prototype i can then as an example apply for the production with a big one yeah of course yeah. i mean the the only principle is you can of course not apply for the same type of work yeah. twice but um <laughs> as i mean as you know you have several phases in a project and let's say you have phase one and then phase 2a or 2b now uh, you certainly can apply for one now and then for two or two A or two B now. So the only thing is you cannot say, okay, um, now I've exhausted the first 200,000 and uh, I still didn't make any process, progress and now I want to uh, somehow be supported for the same type of work or so. And so what I told uh, you that answer, um, uh, specific uh, is, um, in the FAQ, it says you can fund the prototype or the production. There are only two phases named. Is it basically can be more than these two? Because that I heard that the first time from you now. Can there be like uh, I, I fund uh, prototype phase one now, and then I fund prototype phase two, and then I fund production? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I guess it's a continuing business. I mean, as long as it's not the same work, it's yeah. Okay. I mean, as long as you're not. Always, I always only heard about these two phases, and that's it. No, I mean it's it, it's not that you. It's not either or. All. It's just saying uh, you can apply for a prototype or production. It's, it's just meaning one, two. So um, maybe you can even apply for two projects at the same time, as long as you're below the two hundred thousand. I mean, you just have to indicate that if you do apply for phase two, it's not, again, the, the same prototype. Yeah. But it's not either or. Uh, it's just you uh, to give two options. Of course, when you apply for phase two first, and then it does make sense to then apply for a prototype uh, again or so. So I, I think it's, it's just obvious. Okay. So, hearing that there's like a first come first serve basis for the um, for the projects, could it be that the budget is completed until the end of the phase to to uh, send in projects, or how how's that related? I mean, let's put it this way: for the uh, de minimis, if you t just do the math, and we have 50 million for this year, and that by if all de minimis applicants exhaust the 200,000, then you have about 250 projects. And so I think that should go a long way, but again, we'll see what <coughs> happens. But um, I mean, there is certainly an expectation that for a medium term program, as I said. I have another question. Um, you too late. So the next round start with the big fund. Can I transfer <coughs> the minimis to the big fund just to have to be sure not to be over that two hundred thousand euro for another uh, the minimis fund? So because because some companies, if they are in uh, NRWQ, they have the same system with the de minimis and if I'm at the end of the row, 
and I'm a little bit too late and the next step with the big fund starts. Can I just apply to the big fund with my de minimis fund and say, okay, please turn me in the big pool with the not de minimis fund, just to be sure not to have a financing problem or a de minimis problem in the end. Uh, I'm not sure if I fully got your uh, question um, because once we have the full program, you can apply whatever, yeah. whatever you want. When I'm, when I'm here, so this is the minimis and this is the big fund. And uh, maybe you say at, the, uh, at September, okay, you get uh, your money in the de minimis Förderungs program. And the next day I can apply for the big fund, so maybe it's better for me um, to be in the big fund. Can I cancel? No, I mean, yeah, you can always retract your uh, application. I mean, if you do, okay. even, even now, I mean, <laughs> we're not forcing you to say, if, let's say you submit a proposal and uh, four weeks later you have another opportunity or whatever changes, uh, will not <coughs> come to your office and say now you have to take our money or so. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But so from so from your to side, say, <laughs> just just put me in the big pool. Well, then you can always decide. So you can always okay. uh, retract your initial application under the de minimis and say yeah. now and I, I apply. Have to start the whole process again, right? Yeah, but I, I mean the, the the forms and the processes will not be <coughs> that different. So. Yeah. Of course, you may have to put in a sort of uh, under the uh, easy online system. You may have to put in formally another application, but it's not a completely different system. So may, you may have to alter a few things here and there, uh, but essentially, it's still the same process. And this is why I ask because have I do the whole process again, even if it's easy, but then I'm maybe on the. 60 plays of all applications for the big one, or can I just say, okay, I want to transfer and you give me the okay pretty easy for the big one? I mean, we, we always, um, we hope that our feedback will always be easy, but as I said, um, <laughs> The, the, the difference between the de minimis and the full blown is just a formal legal requirement yeah. that we use this window, but the processes and the content is still fairly similar. It, it's not so, in essence, what you maybe could do, let's say you change your mind or uh, you, want, you need some more money, you just retract the one or, uh, and put it into the other one, or you say, now I finish the first phase under the de minimis and I start a, another phase under the full program. So, so it's essentially up to you. So you can apply with the same project a second time with the other pro uh, program, right? Yeah, with successive um, work components or with successive, let's say you have five uh, components and building up on each other and you apply for the first three under the de minimis and then you have an intermediate product and for step four and five you go into the full one. So, um, so ju just so I, uh, I'm uh, understanding it correctly, so when the full program is running, uh, the de minimis part is still open, it's uh, pretty much continuous. Not, not a second round or a second deadline. The deadline is only for the currently funded de minimis. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not um, <coughs> once we reach August, so we can still think about extending uh, the deadline. So, so the, the rationale for the deadline at the end of August was just so sort of to have one cohort fixed and uh, to say, okay, we now focus on other things or so. I mean, if there are some constraints, we can theoretically always uh, extend the deadline, but uh, essentially... I mean, in, in, in case, um, for example, you know you want to stay within the de minimis um, uh, cap, and you also know that you can't make this deadline, should you, uh, should you expect a second round of de minimis, or should you expect to apply within the bigger project and just say, okay, we're we trying to do this de minimis, or... Um, I mean, that 
that pretty much depends on the speed you get from the back from the European Union for the notification. So the de minimis, as I said, it was just the pilot step. And um, even afterwards with the full blown, blown program, you can always keep yourself to 200,000. So uh, all the options you have now, you'll also have later on. The only thing is that then others can apply more. So um, I mean, I don't see any uh, restriction. And we'll see how it works out with the timing and so on. Uh, that's uh, always possible to be modified. OK, thank you. Um, so I have two questions, one very fast, just fast checking, because I understand correctly that so this funding is can be signed with Canadian board. So I could get a project completely funded, funded half with Canadian board and the other half with the minimum. No, I, I, no, ah, okay, this is it. This is it. Within uh, the legal uh, restrictions, you cannot be, of course, you cannot be funded at 100 or 120 percent or so. Uh, so you always have to have a uh, uh, your funding level, wherever it comes from, uh, cannot exceed a certain level. I think it's 80 percent or so, but uh, that we will have to uh, okay. look as, 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 as far as I remember. And the second question is more like for the future, more abstract, because. You said it also before, and um, I read it more than once, and this de minimis is once in a lifetime, so it's one thing, it's like to fill the gap. But actually for startups and for very small projects, it's perfect like this. And so there will be something similar maybe <coughs> in the future, like up to 70% funding, and for smaller projects, because the bigger, the bigger projects, if I don't understand, I don't remember wrongly, so it's, um, it's from 100,000 euros a project. So something like 30, 40,000, which is more, of interest for me now, for example, is not possible anymore. So there is anything? Uh, I mean, you're right. The main difference could be that additional donors um, that comes into play. Um, some of the elements of the um, big program were a little bit modified with regard to existing federal state programs. So um, uh, we'll, we'll see how we tweak the conditions on the lower end in terms of the funding volumes to hard <coughs> get those different funding uh, programs being harmonized. But it's certainly a good question how we deal with the, the, the 10 or 20 percent bonuses because the other element is in a, indeed the same as just the full, full program but not those bonuses. And so I, I look forward for next year's uh, such a program would be great. Secret, one more um, like about the uh, maximum level of funding, um, at, for the medium board, um, you already have to put in 50% of your own money. And if you have medium board funding and also the minimum funding, uh, would it like the 50% that I already put in myself from the medium board and uh, would it uh, also count? Uh, like as a, as, it it's your own co-funding, but then you're but then you're potentially at 120 percent or so. Uh, now I guess I, I think um, because there was another question, I, I think my recommendation would be those specific questions where different funding volumes are being involved. Uh, just send us an email, and I'll ask my colleague how we how those different streams are being connected. But I think the, the bottom line is uh, there is a maximum legal threshold for maximum funding, because otherwise you can accumulate up to 120% or so, and that doesn't make sense. I think there was a lady in the yeah. background. Um, I have two questions. The first is, uh, can you finance life or extensions as well? Extensions or life are they able to be funded as well? Uh, what are life? Life operations like uh, continued, uh, uh, continue of a of a project. A project is in, in nowadays it's called life product, so it means when they are finished, they're not finished. So there's more stuff coming basically after. Yeah, like events and stuff. Like well, that. well, again, if it's something additional, um, and if it's not the same, because if it's already in operation. Um, then yeah. if, it's, if it's not something new, if it's a new product, because the, the very idea 
and the rationale is to support additional activity. And uh, if you say, okay, I put this in, in the drawer and uh, now I just need some more money and you cannot document that you do, do additional work, irrespective of the, the nature of that additional work or the nature of the, the, the uh, game and so on, uh, that you always have to document and also the additional impacts because after all, um, we are subject to review and monitoring and one of the main uh, justifications for the funding was that we want to expand the industry and that has to be documented. Okay, I guess one more, but it's yeah, up to we you. Have more time well, it's up to you to, it's up for you to decide anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> here. Yeah. If you get the notification, uh, I guess there will be a cultural test. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know the requirement? Is, is it going to be the same as in Bavaria and Hervé? Or? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And, and the situation about the IP ownership? Who will own the IP? Who could own or what's the requirement? Um, good question. We did discuss this for a while, but um, uh, I, I'm afraid I couldn't give you the latest um, twist in terms how we how we specifically I, I think we do have a uh, requirement in there because essentially if you do want to strengthen the market in Germany yeah, that, how big, how big that big goes hand in hand but um, no for the specific provision I would also have to look it up myself but it's it, it has been something we've been thinking about completely sure when the uh, Bestätigung is coming, so to notify me in the next week or ask me about uh, missing documents. When should I start or when should I schedule the project start? Is it, I don't know, September or December or January? Of course, I would like to start now, but I don't right. know possible to start earlier yeah. than, uh, so when, when would be the time roughly to schedule the start? Um, I mean, as I said, we want to uh, give some feedback for the mm -hmm. first uh, submittals uh, pretty soon, and then it really depends how fast you are with submitting your documents, and it's, it's essentially your project plan and your business documents and the business review and so on, and. Um, I mean, we have in our other programs, we have been experimenting with uh, different things, but again, this uh, community may be different. But uh, two years ago, we did experiment with sort of um, some provisional starting, um, uh, like some letter of intents. But at one point, we did discover that the uh, applicants were still waiting for the formal approval. So. That's something we have still have to decide, and if we do have some sound expectation that it's a sound project and the, doc the main documents are in, mm -hmm. then we could certainly avail you such That's a letter of intent and say now you can start, and then the formal uh, approval documents you get four weeks or two months later and so on. Um, <coughs> So that always depends on the type of the organization. Sometimes like universities, they are very restrictive in terms of early starts or starts uh, in ahead of the formal approval documents. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we'll try to do our best and be as fast as possible. And the bottom line is if we can make a sound judgment that it's a project or a, a an undertaking that is um, likely to be successful, then we can also uh, hand out that uh, letter of intent and say, well, you can start. And because that has the advantage that all the costs you can already account under the project. Okay, thank you. Okay, there. Oh, sorry. Is there any chance that the notification can fail? Uh, well, well, nothing is certain, but, uh, no, I mean, it's, it's also a question that has been asked before. Um, I think the only question is timing, because the full-blown guidelines are pretty much in line to what others have been doing before. What others, let's say, what the 
two federal states mentioned have been submitting the four. And even if we do have some deficits, and usually you do have some consultation rounds with the European Commission, um, they will not say, okay, this is too bad, you will, don't, we will, don't want to see you again in the next two years or so. So we'll always have some opportunity to fine tune and modify our proposal. So certainly at one point, uh, we want to have the approval, and uh, again, we may have to do some modifications or so. Are there any restrictions concerning uh, topics? Um, uh, I, I can imagine uh, concerning pornography or violence. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing more towards uh, regional uh, topics, uh, the origin. Let's say I want to do a Chinese legend in VR. Um, it's certainly a European interpretation, but um, the origin would be a Chinese legend or, or an American fairy tale. Uh, is this uh, okay, or uh, does it have to be a European uh, um, topic? Well, in that culture test, you have to. It has several options, or has several indicators, and you have to meet. Uh, I think in the, in the uh, models that are already available publicly in the NOV and the W and the variant case. Um, I think there is some large room to meet those uh, criteria. So you don't have to meet all of them, you just have to meet a few of them. So I think uh, it's, uh, it should be manageable and uh, there is still some broad room for creativity. But uh, again, uh, if you look, at, look their culture tests up on the internet, I think it should, be a, uh, should give you good inspiration on what ours will most likely look at. <laughs> about ways of employment for because you kind of said correctly so it's very important to employ in Germany and actually employ not just to have like Radoga the outcast to come sorry I don't know if you say that in English and but my question where if the employment so the contract can be bounded to the project so I uh, I'm a small startup I know employees right now just to go with a specific case and my idea would be to use the money from the Perdon to have employees, but I would first, I mean, I could just do a contract for 10 months, for example. Of course, with the sad decision, etc., which I, I'm sure it's pretty important for the Perdon. Would be a problem, would be okay, would be a minus, would obviously this kind of. Do you understand my question? I mean, yeah, but, but I mean, what, what are the alternatives? Whether you subcontract to another company or whether you have individuals sort of working yeah, if, if on the these... Yeah, if the employment uh, have to be long term, for example, if the, if the enterprise already have to be employees, personal costs, who have to, I mean, or if I can say, well, I will find people to employ, this is my financial plan, these are the roles I need to develop this project, and I will with four people and get the people, because there is also the possibility to talk about the team, uh, so who is going to work on the project, the problem is that it's very hard to find a team <laughs> and to build a, a team before I know how much money I have and if, uh, yeah, if the project is going to Yeah, I mean, you don't have to have your employees or subcontractors or whatever you have. I mean, you don't have to have them available on the very starting point of the project. I mean, you certainly do have some time to build up your employees or, or your contractors or so, or so whatever you want to choose. Uh, I mean, most projects, they don't have to start available right at the beginning of the project. They would always have to hire people and so on. It's only important that at the end of the project you have uh, spent the money available to you for the right purposes. And But it's you don't have to say, okay, I have here this potential contracts available at the appli application date. Okay, so it's flexible. And, it's yeah, yeah. and also that can be I mean, employee uh, be listed. So yeah, that, that's, that's not a problem. Precondition. Right. 